Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on turbulent flow calculations. So, in this lecture we are going to have uh, you know uh, some background about uh, you know these uh, stress terms and how they are modeled and what are those terminologies which are uh, required to be known uh, when we deal with uh, the solution of the turbulence models. Also we will have some introduction about the uh, turbulence models. So, what we have seen that uh, in our uh, you know earlier lectures uh, in, the, in the past lecture even that you have the uh, eddies uh, you know because of the fluctuating uh, you know component. So, you will have uh, uh, so because of the turbulence you will have the eddies of different you know uh, length scale you will have larger eddies you may have the smaller eddies. So, uh, you know they will they will have the different uh, length scale and time scales also for their um, you know interaction. So, because they interact in a very uh, complex manner and uh, that needs to be modeled when we uh, need to see the uh, you know turbulence flow you know modeling. So, uh, and you have the numerical methods basically which uh, uh, which are available uh, to uh, capture this uh, to, to predict uh, or to study these uh, turbulence. So, uh, you know the methods which are used for uh, studying this turbulence are broadly you know uh, categorized or broadly divided in uh, you know uh, three categories. So, one is the uh, you know uh, turbulence uh, models for the Rance equations. So, as we have uh, seen that uh, we focus on the uh, mean flow and also uh, the effect of turbulence on the uh, mean flow properties. So, in that uh, you are getting one um, uh, you know extra uh, term. So, and uh, in this case uh, what we uh, do is that uh, these extra terms which appear which we have seen in the uh, earlier lecture. So, they need to be uh, modeled and uh, you know uh, they will be modeled with the classical turbulence model and uh, uh, basically one of that is the k epsilon turbulence model that is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, used and also there is one uh, model that is Reynolds stress model. So, these models basically uh, so they will be using uh, they will be uh, used for um, you know modeling these extra uh, you know stress terms which are generated that is Reynolds stresses and uh, you know uh, for them the uh, the uh, computational time or, or the resource which is required will be normally reasonably so in and in most of the cases it has been uh, seen that it predicts uh, uh, somewhat form or fine so uh, you know uh, so this approach is uh, mostly used in most of the engineering flows. Next uh, the second category of uh, you know uh, uh, the second approach is the, the large eddy simulation uh, you know. So, now uh, this uh, uh, large eddy uh, simulation, so it is the intermediate form of the uh, you know uh, turbulence calculation. So, here you will have to have the calculation which will be uh, tracking the behavior of the uh, larger eddies. So, you will have uh, you know in the domain you will have the larger eddies as well as the uh, smaller eddies. So, you will be uh, doing that simulation based on uh, or calculation based on the larger eddies and the smaller eddies will be filtered. So, you will have the subgrid scale modeling for that. So, uh, what we do is uh, we will be uh, tracking the uh, behavior of larger uh, you know eddies. So, uh, what happens that you will have uh, you know uh, the uh, 
uh, space filtering of these un unsteady uh, Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, prior to that computation you will have we be doing these space uh, filtration you will be seeing the large uh, eddies and the smaller eddies and uh, the larger eddies will be passed and the, uh, the lower uh, smaller eddies will be rejected and then further you know uh, these uh, uh, smaller eddies are also included using these sub grid scale uh, modeling. So, uh, so, what happens that in this case the uh, computational uh, resource uh, you know uh, if you talk about the resources or volume of calculation it is uh, more than these uh, you know, what we do using these uh, uh, turbulence models like K epsilon or so. So, uh, this is the second uh, you know um, uh, uh, category and then uh, when, uh, normally recently we also do the direct numerical simulation that is also known as DNS. So, uh, they will be uh, uh, computing the mean flow as well as all the turbulent uh, you know uh, fluctuation components. So, uh, you know this uh, in that you have the unsteady Navier-Stokes equations and they will be uh, you know solved in that spatial grids. So, we will have the finer grids to account for the fluctuations and the uh, you know time scales are also taken. So, that you know um, uh, they can be uh, even a smaller uh, uh, time uh, length scales time scales are also taken into account. So, that way you will have uh, you know it will be taking large amount of time, but then they are uh, uh, they will be giving the most accurate results, but it will be taking basically uh, very very you know uh, large time. So, computationally it is very very uh, costly. So, normally it is used for the industrial uh, flow type of uh, uh, computations. Now, uh, what we do is uh, when we talk about the uh, Reynolds uh, averaged Navier-Stokes equations and uh, about the classical turbulence models. So, uh, you know in that uh, what we have seen that uh, normally we have the uh, terms these uh, stress terms and also stress terms like uh, minus of rho of u prime v prime of minus of rho of u prime w prime and uh, minus of rho of uh, uh, you know uh, u prime square that is averaging averaged part. So, these are the uh, stress terms which uh, needs to be you know uh, taken into or if you have the scalar property also. So, u prime uh, phi prime so uh, average part. So, these uh, you know these parts needs to be uh, modeled and you have the uh, you know also averaged Navier-Stokes equations for that you have the turbulence models. And, uh, um, you have uh, uh, so uh, the turbulence models which we use normally is mixing length model as well as the uh, k epsilon turbulence model where you have the uh, two equation uh, you know uh, model you have uh, one equation model you have two equation model. So, these uh, you know uh, uh, based on the additional number of transport equations which you need to solve for modeling these stress terms. So, based on that you have the uh, you know uh, uh, different types of models which are used um, I mean they are known as the turbulence models. So, you know, what happens that uh, if you uh, talk about uh, you know the uh, depending upon the number of transport equations which needs to be solved and that way you have those equations uh, solved. So, you have uh, you know if you take the number of extra transport equation which needs to be solved and uh, uh, and the name of the model will be. So, suppose uh, when you have a uh, classical model that is mixing length model and that uh, has nothing you have a an expression. So, then in that uh, you get the uh, expression for the eddy diffusivity. So, that we will see that what is that eddy diffusivity. So, uh, and, and that is in terms of the mixing length. So, you will that length will be uh, a function of the characteristic length of the uh, you know flow domain. So, you will have that is 0 equation. So, since then there is no extra equation needs to be solved. So, that is uh, that is for the mixing length model. Similarly, uh, you have uh, uh, one equation one extra equation needs to be solved and that is uh, the spellard Elmaras um, model. So, in that you have one extra equation 
transport equation needs to be solved for uh, modeling these uh, for 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 uh, taking into account these uh, extra stress terms. Similarly, uh, you have uh, uh, two extra equations needs to be solved uh, for uh, you know in certain cases, and that is for k and epsilon uh, you know and that is uh, developed by uh, Spalding. So you have uh, that model known as k epsilon model. So you have uh, turbulent kinetic energy and you have the dissipation of uh, kinetic energy equation. So, you have these two terms and you have these two terms they are solved and using the value of k and epsilon you get the uh, you know um, uh, value of uh, those uh, uh, stress values. So, using the uh, you know uh, using the uh, other uh, uh, parameters like nu t or so. So, that we will see similarly you have the k omega model. So, that is also one where you have uh, the uh, two equations one is k for k and another is for omega. Similarly, you have the algebraic stress model. Stress model. So, in these uh, you know models uh, you, uh, uh, you solve two extra uh, equations and uh, then from there you try to uh, uh, find uh, the value of these additional stresses which we need to compute. Uh, when we are solving the turbulence equations. Similarly, you will have seven equations uh, when you are using the Reynolds stress model. So, uh, as you see that uh, uh, normally uh, in the uh, commercial CFD softwares, you will have the provision of all these uh, uh, you know models and you can use uh, take uh, into account uh, any of the model and you can solve the uh, problems. We will have uh, some understanding about these models and what they are uh, especially about uh, the uh, main models which are uh, uh, used and we will try to see that how they are uh, you know used for the computation of these stresses uh, shear turbulence shear stresses uh, you know for modeling of uh, that. So, uh, coming to uh, the um, you know uh, concept of uh, eddy viscosity and uh, the uh, eddy diffusivity. So, as we know that uh, you have the eddying motion in the uh, you know turbulence. Uh, so, uh, you know you will have the uh, stresses which are appearing on the uh, right hand side and uh, you know uh, uh, as we see that you have the Newton's law of viscosity where we say that uh, you will have the uh, stresses. Uh, so, that uh, in that stress you take as proportional to the uh, rate of the deformation of fluid element. So, that is what uh, uh, is being told by the uh, Newton's law of viscosity. So, so that uh, you know for incompressible fluid what we write is tau i j that we write as mu of s i j. So, that is uh, you know the uh, Newton's law of viscosity and in that we talk about these uh, viscous stresses and uh, it is uh, nothing but mu of uh, uh, dou u i by dou x j plus dou u j by dou x i. So, uh, you know uh, in this uh, uh, if uh, i or j uh, will be 1 in that case you take it as x and if it is uh, 2 then you can take it as the uh, y or if you take uh, the j equal to 3 in that case it will be for the uh, uh, third direction that is z direction. So, if you talk about uh, tau 1 2, so it will be tau x y. So, it will be mu of uh, dou u by dou y plus dou v by dou x. So, uh, this is uh, the what normally we have understood. Now, uh, when we talk about the turbulence, so uh, in the turbulence you will have the uh, decay of the turbulence also. So, uh, you know, so what uh, is uh, found that the turbulence decays unless there is shear. In isothermal incompressible flows. So, if there is no shear then uh, uh, you know it will be uh, uh, you know decaying. So, that is uh, uh, there 
Now, uh, also it is uh, found that the turbulent stresses are uh, increasing uh, you know as the mean rate of uh, deformation increases. So, these turbulent stresses are found to increase as mean rate of deformation increases. So, if the mean rate of deformation will be uh, you know increasing in that case uh, the turbulence is uh, uh, stresses are found to uh, you know increase. So, based on that these two you know uh, you know findings what uh, Bosnisk has uh, proposed uh, he proposed in 1877. So, uh, the Bosnisk is uh, proposing that these renal stresses might be proportional to the mean rates of deformation. So, that way based on these two you know uh, findings it can be said that the renal stress will be might be proportional to the mean rate of deformation. So, it will be uh, tau i j that is mean renal stress will be u i prime u j prime and uh, you know uh, average part. So, that will be uh, you know the this is your uh, uh, you know uh, mean uh, rates of deformation. So, this has been written as the equation mu t into dou u i by dou x j plus dou u j by dou x i minus of 2 by 3 uh, rho k uh, delta i j. This is uh, you know delta i j is the Kronecker delta and uh, when i will be equal to j. So, that uh, this uh, term will be uh, vanishing delta i j uh, vanishes uh, in those uh, uh, cases. So, uh, you know uh, in that case uh, you know uh, this is uh, expressed. So, when uh, uh, you will have uh, uh, this tau i j. So, uh, now in this case the k it is uh, the turbulent kinetic energy and it will be half of u prime. Uh, so, so in this case k will be half of u prime square plus v prime square plus uh, w prime square. So, this is basically uh, turbulent kinetic energy uh, per unit mass. Now, now, what you see in this case this mu t this is uh, the uh, turbulent viscosity or the eddy viscosity uh, you know this is uh, known as the uh, turbulent viscosity or uh, eddy viscosity and this is uh, based on that you will have the term nu t nu t will be nothing but mu t by rho. So, uh, that will be uh, kinematic uh, viscosity kinematic turbulent viscosity uh, or visco uh, turbulent viscosity. Now, uh, Kronecker uh, delta delta i j it will be 1 if i equal to j and uh, it will be 0 if delta if i is not equal to j. So, it is basically in a matrix wherever i equal to j along the diagonal it will have one uh, part and otherwise it will have uh, uh, the uh, 0 part. So, that way you will have uh, uh, you know uh, uh, so it will be giving the uh, correct uh, result for the normal Reynolds stresses where uh, i will be equal to j. So, uh, so uh, for the tau x x that is minus of rho of uh, u prime square uh, you know average of the term. So, uh, and similarly uh, you will have the uh, uh, you know tau y y or tau z. So, you will have uh, uh, those terms uh, uh, coming into. Now, if you try to have the uh, scalar part if you have the uh, you know uh, if you take the turbulent transport of uh, uh, something like uh, heat mass or other scalar uh, properties. So, in that case so what we take is uh, we are taking uh, uh, this term and uh, this is uh, tau t. So, uh, so minus of uh, rho of u i prime and phi prime. So, it is uh, average uh, value it will be uh, equal to tau t and uh, dou of uh, phi that is mean uh, value by dou of x i. So, basically the, this term is uh, it is known as the uh, turbulent or eddy diffusivity. So, uh, you know uh, it is uh, uh, you know uh, it is analogous to uh, this term mu t. So, uh, what happens that uh, you know for other scalar quantity we use this tau t and uh, you know uh, what we do we have the Reynolds analogy. So, what we do is that uh, we introduce a uh, number that is your uh, uh, Smith number 
So, that is a turbulent Prandtl or the uh, uh, Smith number. So, that is uh, defined as uh, sigma t. So, we defined uh, this uh, sigma t that is turbulent Prandtl or Smith number. So, that will be basically the uh, you know turbulent viscosity uh, divided by the uh, diffusivity term. So, uh, you know many a times uh, we take its value as a constant and normally we take it as uh, unity in uh, most of the uh, cases and in and most of the CFD solvers uh, they use uh, this uh, you know uh, 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 turbulent uh, Prandtl number turbulent uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, Prandtl or Smith number that is uh, taken as uh, uh, the value of uh, unity. Now, uh, coming to the uh, different uh, turbulence, so as we see uh, we have, uh, so this is about the uh, eddy viscosity part. Uh, now, we come to the uh, different uh, turbulence models as we have discussed that uh, we have uh, different turbulence models which are uh, used are the uh, uh, you know uh, mixing length model where we uh, and describe the stress by means of simple algebraic you know formula uh, for mu t that is uh, and it will be as a function of uh, the position. So, we will have uh, some uh, you know value of uh, position that is L m. So, length mixing length is taken. So, in the in that term we are uh, uh, expressing this mu t value. So, that is why it is known as the uh, mixing length model. Then you will have the k epsilon model where you have two equations for k and epsilon and based on that we uh, find uh, this uh, mu t. Then uh, you will have uh, other equations like uh, Reynolds stress equation models, advanced turbulence models will be there uh, and also you will have the uh, uh, you know Rand's turbulence models. So, this we will uh, see. Now, if we uh, talk about the uh, mixing length model, so in this lecture we are going to have uh, some idea about the uh, mixing length model, how you know uh, these uh, mixing length model works and how we are uh, using it for the uh, you know prediction of these uh, stress component turbulent uh, stress components. So, uh, this model will be uh, attempts to describe the stresses by means of simple algebraic formula for mu t as a function of the position. And, uh, in this the assumption is that the turbulent viscosity mu t is isotropic and it can be used to predict the turbulent transport of uh, uh, scalar quantities. So, what happens uh, you know uh, in this case uh, the uh, turbulent stress uh, you know this is uh, turbulent Reynolds stress uh, what we do is uh, we uh, describe it in the form of this L m square rho L m square do u by do y and do you by do y here. So, basically what we see uh, it is uh, expressed in terms of uh, uh, this L m and then that is why uh, you know uh, we call it as a mixing length. Now, it is uh, value also uh, varies. So, uh, I mean uh, there are certainly uh, certain uh, derivations for uh, that. So, uh, what is done is normally uh, what we uh, see that nu t. Uh, now, in this uh, you can write as uh, the velocity scale and the length scale. So, because nu t has the unit of meter square per second. So, uh, you know this is meter per second and meter. So, it will be meter square per second. So, if the, the one velocity scale and one length scale that uh, describes the effect of turbulence. So, in that case the dimensional analysis will yield to this equation nu t will be c times uh, v l. Now, this c is basically a uh, dimensional uh, less uh, you know constant of proportionality. Because the uh, nu t has the unit of meter square per second. Now, uh, so we can write uh, the mu t as uh, c of rho v l. So, v is the velocity scale and uh, L is the uh, uh, length scale. Now, most of the kinetic energy basically is contained in the uh, largest eddies and uh, the uh, turbulent uh, length scale L it is uh, basically the uh, you know the uh, characteristic of these eddies because they are containing most of the uh, turbulent energies. Uh, you know so 
and uh, uh, they are uh, basically interacting with the uh, mean flow. So, if you talk about the, so what you can say is there will be strong connection between the uh, mean flow and the behavior of these uh, uh, larger eddies and uh, uh, we can also think of attempting this uh, link to the uh, velocity scale of the eddies with the mean flow properties. So, what is uh, seen is that you can have the velocity scale as C of L times uh, dou u by dou y. So, if you, uh, you uh, take the dimensionally you know this will be dimensionally correct because if the eddy scale is uh, uh, eddy scale length is L in that case if you correlate it with the uh, velocity gradient. So, uh, you know uh, so in that case uh, and because uh, the turbulent stresses they are proportional to the uh, you know uh, uh, they have also the uh, relation with uh, ship with the uh, velocity gradient. So, you can have the velocity gradient that can be uh, expressed in terms of C L dou u by dou y. So, basically uh, if you use them you can further write nu t as uh, the uh, uh, L m square and dou u by dou y. So, if you take all these terms uh, together and you have the uh, constant so, you can have the dou u by dou y. So, uh, this is basically known as the uh, Prandtl's mixing length model. So, this uh, you know uh, L m which is uh, coming this is uh, because of this term this is known this is known as the mixing length. So, that is known as the mixing length model and uh, if uh, the uh, dou u by dou y is basically the only significant mean velocity gradient. So, you can have the uh, tau x y or tau y x which we write as minus of rho of u prime v prime. So, it will be written as rho of um, L m square and dou u by dou y. So, it will be uh, nu t into dou u by dou y in fact. So, uh, you can I mean uh, mu t into dou u mu t will be rho into nu t. So, it will be uh, this term and then you will have uh, the dou u by dou y. This dou u by dou y has been kept in mod because uh, the velocity has to have the positive uh, value. So, that is why it has been taken as the uh, mod value. So, that way uh, you know from this you try to have the modeling of or prediction of these uh, stresses using these uh, mixing length. So, basically what has uh, happened that uh, if you may, it has been found these, uh, these uh, for different types of flow you take these uh, uh, you know uh, mixing length as different value like uh, you know for the uh, for mixing layer you take uh, these uh, mixing length. So, this mixing length L m it will be uh, 0 0.07 L and L is the uh, layer width. Similarly, if you have a jet so in the case of jet you will have 0 0.09 L where the L is the jet half width. So, for different types of uh, flows so you have uh, uh, the uh, for uh, the uh, you know wake. So, for uh, wake suppose wake type of flow you will have 0.16 L and this is again wake half width. So, for different type of uh, flows you have different uh, values of this mixing length which is taken and uh, similarly for the boundary layer or even for the uh, pipes and channels you have one expression that is uh, uh, L with respect to y you know it will be varying so it will have a functional value and uh, you will have the uh, L will be the pipe radius or the uh, half of the uh, you know uh, channel width. So, those things are taken so you can have these values from the standard you know textbooks and that can be used. Uh, so, they are used basically in the uh, turbulence models when you are trying to have the prediction of these turbulent stresses uh, using these. So, uh, its use will be there in the Tundish flow basically when uh, we do the Tundish uh, modeling. In that case when we have to predict the uh, quantities in that case which kind of model to be selected. So, being the simple in model uh, simple uh, model it takes minimum time to solve. So, you can start with this model and then go to other models and see how they are uh, you know predicting the your uh, you know uh, different output parameters. So, this is about that we will talk about more of the turbulence models which are used uh, 
you know uh, in, in commercial solvers or so. So, that will be in the uh, next classes. Thank you very much.